King of Honor's 13th anniversary show is tonight, and I have not really done a lot of ROH coverage, so I apologize if I do not know a lot of the... I mean, I know a lot of the talent, but I don't know some of the new guys on here, so I do apologize if I book or predict based on what I know, um, but I do apologize for that. Before we go on to the main card, I want to say something really quickly. With Samoa Joe being released from TNA, there's been a lot of speculation of a lot of promotions. TNA, uh, TNA probably resigning him, uh, Ring of Honor, uh, WWE, Japan, with New Japan and All Japan, um, Lucha Underground, AAA, CMLL, basically any promotion who has a brain has been trying to get Samoa Joe. And it looks like Ring of Honor has Samoa Joe, and Samoa Joe will be here tonight. Um, I don't know if he's in a match. It, it doesn't really say anything on the card about Samoa Joe being, uh, being in a match at all or anything. Might be a surprise. You never know. But I will say this. I mean, it's amazing that uh, Ring of Honor has a great talent pool. I mean, if you look at Ring of Honor in the past, um, you have great names like Brian Danielson, the, the now Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, um, the former Chris Hero, Cash Ono, and now he's back as Chris Hero and has gained a shit ton of weight. And I thought I was fucking fat. Look at this fucking guy. I mean, Jesus, no wonder they wanted him to fucking cut weight. He looks, he looks like he is now. It's fucking unbelievable how a great talent like Chris Hero looks like a fat piece of shit. I mean, it, it's unbelievable. I cannot believe it. Um, <laughs> I honestly don't know what to fucking say about this match. Uh, say about that. But, I mean, you have uh, the former Claudio Casagnoli, uh, Cesar who is now Cesaro. You have former Tyler Black, who is now Seth Rollins. But I still call it football a stomp the blackout. It, it, it's just an ama amazing move. You have, and I'll, as I, I want to say this, as much as people think El Generico has been retired and has been helping Mexicans, Mexican orphans, or whatever the fuck the story is now, we all know him as Sami Zayn. Speaking of former guys, I mean, you have the former Kevin Steen, who is now Kevin Owens, who is now the NXT champion. I mean, NXT, uh, not NXT, I mean, NXT is a great talent pool. But Ring of Honor, for years, seems to have been the developmental of the developmental. And what I mean by that, I mean you have guys like Kenta, who is now video like Tommy. You have people who have come to ROH every once in a while, like Finn Balor, who is Prince Devitt. I mean, looking at the talent now, I mean you have four talent that is from WWE and from TNA. Um, but it's amazing, especially with some of the first few matches. But let's just go to the matches right quick. But, but, but I'm just going to say the last pay-per-view of Ring of Honor I've actually watched as a, as a full was the... I forget which one it was. It was the one where Adam Cole won the world title for the first time in the tournament. I forget if that was uh, Death of His Honor or one of the anniversaries. I can't remember, and I apologize for that. But the moment sticks in my mind when Adam Cole turns heel and super kicks the Briscoe. I forget which Briscoe. I think it was Jay Briscoe who had the title. I think Jay Briscoe has it now, actually. So it's gone for uh, full circle a little bit. But it's going to be interesting because three New Japan belts will be on the line. I don't think all will be on the line. IWGP, IWGP belt will not be on the line, though. But a few other belts will be on the line. And it's very interesting to see which ones will be on the line here. First off, let's go to the grudge match. And by the way, this is in Vegas, so this will be a very interesting, especially with the 13th anniversary, 13 black. Might as well put it in Vegas. Why not? Uh, Roderick Strong versus BJ Whitmire. And these guys I know much about because Roderick Strong has been one of the greatest talents Ring of Honor has had. Probably one of the under, more underutilized ones at times, but he's had great matches. And BJ Whitmire has had great matches too, but BJ Whitmire... The last time I remember these two were in the ring, I remember Roderick Strong pile-driving B.J. Whitmire on the fucking apron, and it was brutal. 
or some kind of move on the apron. I think it was a pile driver. I don't want to. Don't quote me on that for sure. But uh, there has been where B.J. Whitmire has been in a way semi-retired. I mean, he's come back, but if anything, if you're going to book this based on that, then you have B.J. pick up the win. I don't remember who's heel or who's face in these matches. I don't really care. You break a man's neck, you better give him his comeuppance. It's that simple. And speaking of TNA talent being released, ODB is in Ring of Honor. I, I thought I would never say those words. ODB is in Ring of Honor. Very weird having that there. Wow. I mean, what? how did this happen, you might ask? I mean, you put him with the Briscoes, which is good enough. I mean, it, it, the, the storyline books itself with the ODB and the Briscoes. Did I say the ODB? But who the fuck cares? ODB and the Briscoes. That books itself. I'm, but, uh, but we've had the first woman of Ring of Honor, Maria Canellis, who is amazing, has improved, she's improved greatly over the past few years, not just as a manager, but as a wrestler. If you've seen her on the FWE cards as the women champion, you know she's improved greatly. Um, but, I mean, this is a big test for Maria. ODB has the size advantage both in the Bristol area and size in general. So, I, I don't know how I'd book this. I, I would want to say, I would want to say fucking Maria wins via shenanigans, but it makes sense. You're bringing this woman in, you might as well give her a win. This is her pay per debut, I believe, so you might as well make it look strong. And. One person I have no idea who the fuck he is, Moose, will face Mark Briscoe. Um, but he is the former NFL player Quinn Oje, Oje, Ojanaka. I hope I said that right. I probably stuttered on it, but Ojanaka. But he was hired by R.D. Rabbins and put him alongside with Veda, Stock, uh, Veda Scott and Stokely Hathaway in Prince Nana's latest embassy group. And the embassy has been a great stable over the past few years. I mean, we had Mia Yim in there for a while, and now it seems Veda Scott has taken that role as the woman on the on the actual embassy. And speaking of Prince Nana, I think he's actually a talent relations guy for Ring of Honor right now. He used to be a great manager, and now he's he's uh, doing talent relations, and I guess is also helping with the embassy, which is a great thing. I, I don't know much about the guy, not in the NFL or in wrestling. I have no idea who the fuck he is. So, and he looks intimidating, I'll just say that much, but you look at fucking Briscoe with his fucking derp face, and he's fucking more intimidating than this motherfucker right here. So it's simple. Mark Briscoe will win. I don't know much about the guy, but there's no way he'll fucking win this match. It's beginning of a match I've wanted to see for a long time. Cedric Alexander, and the former Evan Bourne, but we've known him since WSX, Wrestling Society X, as Matt Seidel. And, God, I am actually glad that fucking Seidel has the has, has anything. I mean, it's amazing that they picked him up. It's about time they picked him up. And, honestly, as much as I would love Cedric and Alexander to get a big win over a former WWE superstar, Matt Seidel, the, what can you not say about the guy? He has to win the match. But, now we get into the New Japan Belts, which I love here. I love this. You have the, I believe, the New Japan Heavyweight Tag Team Titles. The IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Titles. You have the great team of the Bullet Club. And I've wanted to talk about the Bullet Club for a very long time. The Bullet Club is one of the most dominant stables, ironically started by the former Prince Devitt, who is now Finn Balor. Um, and you have great talent in here. You have AJ Styles, you have the Young Bucks, you have, I think Jeff Jarrett joined as part of Global, it was Global Force Steel to Japan, which was very interesting. But this match screams greatness right here. The new, the IWG, I want to say New Japan belts, but the IWGP heavyweight tag team titles are on the line as the Bullet Club, consisting of members Doc Anderson and, actually no, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. 
And I have not seen Carl Anderson in a long ass time. So it'll be interesting to see what he's like in the ring. Against the Kingdom represented by Ma by Matt Bennett and oh god, who the fuck is Taven? Matt Taven. Michael Bennett and Matt Taven. I can't believe I got those guys fucking mixed up. But regardless, they face the addiction formerly known. Oh my god, these guys. That's bad influence. Kazarian and Christopher Daniels. I cannot believe these guys are in Ring of Honor as well. Honestly, I do not care who wins this match, but I would love to see the addiction with the belts. But with the Bullet Club, uh, you know, I don't I don't see uh, Kazarian or... With this booking, you have to think, who will work Japan? It's that simple. Who will work Japan? And with that being said, I, I don't see either of these other teams working Japan with the exception of, of Kazarian and Daniels. So the Bullet Club will easily win this match. And in a non-title match, the IWGP Heavyweight Champion AJ Styles will face ACH in an amazing match. I mean, I've seen a lot of ACH. I've heard a lot about, about the guy, and I love how he works in the ring. Will he beat AJ Styles? I honestly doubt it. Will AJ Styles break ACH's neck like he did with Guilty Tatsu and many others? That's been a big thing with the Styles clashes of late. Breaking necks. This is what I don't understand. The Styles clash has always been a face bump. You has always been a face bump. Yet people stupidly tuck their chin in and break their necks. I mean, Yoshitatsu has fucking holes in his neck and he's still bleeding from him, I believe. Uh, but, <laughs> I mean, it's your fault that you botch the move and break your neck. It's not Styles' fault at all. I've heard many debates about this. AJ Styles is doing the move. You, you don't tuck your chin. You leave it out. It's a face bump. He's actually had to tell people this. And it's, 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 it baffles me that you would have to tell them this after seeing the move for almost 10 years now. Maybe even 10, 15 maybe. Will he break his neck? I don't want it to happen, but I would love to see it on pay-per-view. It, it would bring ratings for sure. <laughs> and then, the Ring of Honor tag titles are on the line. It's Red Dragon, Bobby Fish, and Colorado one of the best tag teams I've seen in a long time. Face the Bullet Club's representatives of the Young Bucks, who are the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. I don't think this is a title for title. I think it's just the Ring of Honor tag titles. And the Young Bucks have held the belt before. They have held... I remember at one time, they have held the IWGP Junior Tag Team titles, the PWS Tag Team titles, and the Ring of Honor Tag titles at the same time. Will they hold the belt? I honestly... I would honestly love to see the Young Bucks with double gold. And I believe there's only two matches left on the card, but we'll get to those in the next part, because I have to cut this up a little bit, just because of how amazing this card is.